and welcome to Exploring with the Estuarium. My name is Ariel and I'll be your educator. Just how healthy is the sound? Today we'll investigate that by running water quality tests on a sample taken from Bud Inlet and we'll learn about the environmental factors that affect the sound. After this lesson, you'll be able to identify and test various water quality parameters of estuaries, summarize trends in water quality data, and understand how to report and improve water quality of the Puget Sound. What is an estuary? An estuary is a body of water where rivers or streams meet the sea or ocean. Estuaries are typically partially enclosed by land or another barrier while remaining open to the ocean. They can be identified by fresh water from rivers and streams flowing into the salt water from the sea. Estuaries are fragile and sensitive ecosystems that are easily affected by changes in land and development. Water quality declines could endanger wildlife in estuarine areas. Scientists conduct tests on water samples from the Puget Sound. Some of the water quality parameters are dissolved oxygen, nitrate, pH, phosphate, salinity, temperature, and turbidity. Dissolved oxygen, or DO, is important to the health of the estuary ecosystem. All marine animals need oxygen to survive. Natural waters with consistently high dissolved oxygen levels are most likely healthy in stable environments and are capable of supporting a diversity of marine organisms. Natural and human-induced changes to the estuary ecosystem can affect the availability of dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen percent saturation is an important measurement of water quality. Cold water can hold more dissolved oxygen than warm water. High levels of bacteria from sewage pollution or large amounts of rotting plants can cause the percent saturation to decrease. This can cause large fluctuations in dissolved oxygen levels throughout the day, which can affect the ability of plants and animals to thrive. Nitrate is a nutrient needed by all aquatic plants and animals to build protein. Nitrate is released into the aquatic system by the decomposition of dead plants and animals and the secretions of living animals. Excess nutrients like nitrate increase plant growth and decay promote bacterial decomposition, and therefore decrease the amount of oxygen available in the water. Sewage is the main source of excess nitrate added to natural waters, while fertilizers and agricultural runoff also contribute to high levels of nitrate. Drinking water containing high nitrate levels can affect the ability of our blood to carry oxygen. This is especially true for infants who drink formula made with water containing high levels of nitrate. You should always have a professional lab test your drinking water for the presence of nitrates. pH is a measurement of the acidic or basic quality of water. The pH scale ranges from a value of 0, very acidic, to 14, very basic, with 7 being neutral. The pH of natural water is usually between a 6.5 and 8.2. Most aquatic organisms are adapted to a specific pH level and may die if the pH water changes even slightly. pH can be affected by industrial waste, agricultural runoff, or drainage from improperly run mining operations. Phosphate is a nutrient needed for plant and animal growth and is also a fundamental element in metabolic reactions. High levels of this nutrient can lead to overgrowth of plants, increased bacterial activity, and decreased dissolved oxygen levels. Phosphate comes from several sources, including human and animal waste, industrial pollution, and agricultural runoff. Salinity is the total of all salts dissolved in water. The salt content of water affects the distribution of plant and animal life in an aquatic system, based on the amount of salt that they can tolerate. Variable salinity is the most characteristic feature of estuaries. Salinity at one place changes daily with the tides and tidal excursions. Salinity also changes dramatically during the seasons. The head of an estuary may experience almost full strength seawater in the summer, while in the winter, floods of fresh water may reach the mouth of an estuary. Salinity can also increase during major storms and hurricanes. In many cases, major storms can affect salinity levels for years. Temperature is very important to water quality. Temperature affects the amount of dissolved oxygen in the water, the rate of photosynthesis by aquatic plants, and the sensitivity of organisms to toxic waste, parasites, and disease. Thermal pollution, the discharge of heated water from industrial operations, for example, can cause temperature changes that threaten the balance of aquatic systems. Turbidity is the measure of the relative clarity of water. Turbid water is caused by suspended and colloidal matter such as clay, silt, 
organic and inorganic matter, and microscopic organisms. Turbidity should not be confused with color, since darkly colored water can still be clear and not turbid. Turbid water may be the result of soil erosion, urban runoff, algal blooms, and bottom sediment disturbances, which can be caused by boat traffic and abundant bottom feeders. In the early 2000s, scientists began to notice massive dead zones in a portion of the Puget Sound known as the Hood Canal. Dead zones are hypoxic, or areas of low oxygen, where marine life either suffocates or moves out of the area. Using water quality tests, scientists confirmed that there was virtually no oxygen in the water in these areas. Scientists also noticed that there were heavy algal, or plankton blooms, in these areas. If there is a large plankton bloom, then there should be lots of oxygen getting into the water through the process of photosynthesis. So why was there no oxygen? Water quality tests showed that there was a much higher concentration of nutrients in the water than normal, and this was contributing to the heavy algal blooms. There was too much algae for the herbivores to eat, and as the algae died, it began to decompose in large amounts. The chemical reaction for decomposition needs oxygen, so this process was literally sucking the oxygen from the ecosystem. The next question was, where were these extra nutrients coming from? Scientists found that each spring, as farmers and homeowners fertilize their lands to enhance plant growth, rain washes the fertilizer off the land and into the Hood Canal. There are also many septic systems in this area, and if they are not maintained well, they can fail, leaking human waste into the groundwater that drains into the Hood Canal. This heavy influx of nutrients into the system contributed to the heavy algal blooms. What are some possible solutions to the water quality problem? Farmers can make informed and responsible choices as to where they put their farms and what they put on their crops. We as consumers can make informed and responsible choices regarding what we buy and who we buy it from. We have a large growing population of people on this earth and we need to be able to feed them, but we need to do it in a sustainable way. Buying local and organic is a great way to do this. Homeowners can ensure that they maintain their septic systems and use organic products on their lawns and gardens. It is also important for pet owners to responsibly dispose of their pet waste so that it doesn't get into the water to contribute to the issue. This goes a long way in helping solve the problem. Now we're going to review the water quality test results from a sample collected in Bud Inlet and try to understand what might be affecting these results. The water quality sample was taken from the public dock in downtown Olympia on Bud Inlet. Let's take a look at our dissolved oxygen result. My best estimate is that the DO is between 0 parts per million and 4 parts per million, so about a 2 parts per million. This is poor dissolved oxygen saturation. The water sample has very little available oxygen for organisms to use. Water that is warm or has little movement can release oxygen into the atmosphere, causing a low DO result. Next, let's interpret the nitrate results. It's about 5 parts per million, which is an okay test result. Ideally, we would like to see less nitrate in the water. Since the sample was taken downtown next to streets, businesses, and the marina, I'm surprised it wasn't higher. On to pH. The pH of the water sample is roughly a 7, which is neutral or fresh water. This is within our acceptable range of a 6 to an 8. It had been raining before the sample was taken, which could explain the result being more fresh water than salt water. Also, the testing site is located near the mouth of the estuary where the Deschutes River flushes all of its fresh water into Bud Inlet. Our next test is phosphate. I would say our sample result is between 2 parts per million and 4 parts per million. Unfortunately, this is just fair. Our good to excellent range is 1 to 2 parts per million. This could be a result of stormwater runoff from manicured lawns and green spaces located near our testing site. Because we are sampling estuarine waters, we are also testing for salinity. Our test results are showing about 35 parts per thousand for our salt content, which is expected since it was high tide when I took the sample. High tide flushes salt water closer to shore. Our last test is turbidity. I estimate this test result at between 0 JTUs and 4 JTU, which puts it right in our good to excellent range. There's not too many algae blooms happening in Bud Inlet right now or turning of sediment to cause high turbidity. Overall, the water quality sample taken from Bud Inlet was fair 
and was in acceptable ranges for most of our parameters. However, the Puget Sound's water quality could always use our help. What you and your family do on land and how you take care of your water affects the Puget Sound. Things like littering, leaving rocks overturned, and spilling oil can be harmful to the Puget Sound. Your actions make a difference. Thanks for joining us today on another episode of Exploring with the Estuarium. If you liked our video, give it a thumbs up. And if you wish to continue to get more of our educational videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook at the Puget Sound Estuarium. Bye.